hearty welcome to Susie Schatz, um, who is the chef of the evening and an amazing foodie traveler. Um, where's the book? Is it right? Where? Here we are. We got two. <laughs> She wrote this amazing, amazing book. She went traveling for near, nearly a year with her husband um, and um, loves food as much as I do, which really, that's why we're such good friends. Um, and, uh, and then came home and uh, put together this amazing, amazing recipe book with Mary Louise, who's a stylist. And together they compiled and, and did this this beautiful culinary experience that I was gifted actually in December. So this, she won an award with this, didn't you, Susie? Oh, yes, it won. Yes. Wow. <laughs> didn't know that. So that's why at this point I'm going to hand it over to Susie and just thank you both so much thank for coming you. to my kitchen. So. Well, thank you very much for having us. Um, Elaine always has very profound speakers healing and so when Elaine suggested I come and chat I said well I, I don't know it doesn't feel big enough but I'm so excited to see that people are interested um, in something that I love very much so Elena said we need to balance the cooking and and the travel stories um, I don't want to be too self-indulgent about talking about myself but happy to answer any questions and I'll try and just give you anecdotes as to how it came about I'm not trained in in the industry. I have just eaten my way to this point. Yes. <laughs> That's how you do it. Um, and I think if you love food enough, you are driven to to cook and cook and cook and and you learn stuff along the way. So um, at uh, the ripe old age of about 36, my husband and I gave up our real jobs, our proper corporate fancy jobs and decided to go traveling around the world. And we got one of those tickets where you start in one point and you, you can go all the way as long as you keep going in the same direction. And so that was the plan to go all the way around the world. And we did a brief stop in Vancouver and then we flew to Mexico. And I just felt like I never wanted to leave Mexico. And it was one month and then two months and then three months and Mike said, I, we're never going to get around the world at this point. <laughs> Slowly. I said, maybe we could just spend a year in Mexico because it was just, my mind was blown. The only thing I knew about Mexico was like Tex-Mex and I had perceptions. Hi, Evolt. Of, um, and I love seeing everybody <laughs> arrive. <laughs> Hi, Janice. Um, and, and, and I just, it was just so amazing that the country was so rich and so vast and you could literally be on a beach with turquoise seas one day and then be transported into the, you know, central Mexico where we were wearing ski clothes a couple of days later because of, of the altitude and, and, and it just had everything. And, you know, I've always been familiar with places like Italy, having these re rich food cultures where you go to Veneto and then you go to Tuscany and it's all the different recipes. But I didn't realize how rich it was in Mexico. Wherever you went, they had such different dishes. And so I was also surprised um, that that we just weren't being exposed to that in South Africa. And I thought everything is very simple to make, actually. Um, but we're not making it. So I just started writing as part of my diary all the recipes that I wanted to try when I was when I was back. And from Mexico, we did finally leave. And then we went to Guatemala and we thought nothing to see in Guatemala. We'll be in and out in two weeks. <laughs> um, and then we, we started studying Spanish. And um, I, I think I know my mother's here. She was very worried we wouldn't make it out of Guatemala because there was quite Some violent language. things oh. happening in the capital. But we were in this idyllic little town, oh, wow. um, and it was on on the rim of this on the on this lake, which was surrounded by volcanoes. And we studied Spanish there under the palm trees, oh. and there were just all these beautiful little local places. I remember in the morning walking down to try and fa find homemade tortillas. And thinking that was the tortilla shop I ended up buying from people, but they were actually just making them in their garden. <laughs> and I could never find, they were never outside again. <laughs> but um, 
so we, we, we then again a long time in Guatemala and then from there um, Nicaragua we thought whoever stays in Nicaragua but we were there longer than we expected everywhere we went was just so amazing and there were so many delicious things to take out of it so from there we went to Guatemala uh, from Nicaragua um, Costa Rica and then we went into South America Ecuador Colombia Peru uh, Brazil Argentina um, most places where on a South African passport, you don't need a visa. So if anybody hasn't traveled that region, all of those are visa free except Mexico. Sure. Um, yeah. I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah, except for, I think, Panama and Bolivia. So, wow. so we, didn't, we didn't get there. And then we did run out a bit of time because we were pretty much the whole year in that part of the world. And by the time um, uh, my husband's a, a kite surfer and we, we spent a lot of time in Brazil in this little town called Jericoacoara where you had to take a bus somewhere and then you had to take an hour long four by four across a nature reserve beach of white sand and white donkeys and when you got there it was just little alleyways of beach sand mm -hmm. and all there were were a few beach buggies you know a few restaurants and at, in the evening they'd wheel out the cocktail carts and everyone would sit on the dune and watch sunset and you'd order your capiroscas while they did the capoeira on the beach and we just we just never wanted to leave but i thought what if i pretended that one day i was going to write a book i'd feel so important <laughs> <laughs> and so i decided to give myself that sense of importance although i never for a second thought it would actually happen um, and so I just started writing and there was like a different balance between recipe versus travel anecdotes and and um, so I started writing that on the trip once I got home I started cooking and making all of these dishes and my dad can vouch for the amount that he had to eat um, <laughs> lucky man a lot of iterations of everything because <laughs> Some of the dishes in the book are typical um, or traditional recipes from the countries. So you can Google them and you'll find recipes, but you'll probably find 30 versions of the recipes. Yeah. And you'll also find that they contain a lot of ingredients that are difficult to find if you're not in the region. Yeah. So I worked through many of those, adapting them to the ingredients. And what I've tried to do in the book is, is be true to the region and say, well, if you are you know, in Brazil, you will use um, anato seeds, but you're not going to find them here. Well, maybe you do now, but they were very hard when I wrote. And and so all I do is I use a coconut oil. It's still delicious. Um, and for example, in Peru, they have aji amarillo, which is this yellow chili with a very specific flavor, which you also can't get here. And And I've actually subsequently, when I came back, I chatted to a Peruvian friend that I met and I said please just check these recipes do you think I'm doing justice and she said I have the same challenge here. I can't make them exactly the same mm. but and she was using similar substitutes so so that was a fun process and I and I think that um, that everything is delicious in the book even you know and I've tried to give explain always how it would have been there's one recipe which is a vegetarian recipe in the book um, from Ecuador, it's not vegetarian there, but they, they cook with a lot of peanuts and a lot of peanut sauce. So I wanted to bring that in because there were some countries we went to, like Nicaragua. I mean, you know, if you're in Europe, you can always find recipe books from those countries. Mm. Some of the countries, I tried my hardest to find a recipe. There was nothing. Nicaragua, I think, I found a little photocopied book that someone had obviously written, photocopied, stapled together, and she was selling them at the bus station. And because the, the Spanish dialects are different from one country to the next, I didn't know all the ingredients. So I was sitting at the bus station asking the woman in front of me, like sometimes we had to draw pictures of what they were. And then, you know, so from those countries, uh, I was working with things I'd had and also those little, mm -hmm. those little um, books and so that is that is how i ended up with the selection of recipes obviously there are a billion things that could go in and it's just a sample of the things like i said the things that i enjoyed most and i mean one of the things i had in argentina 
at the train station. I mean, who eats good food at a train station? But I feel like there, they have, uh, that, that was so, and there, it was a vegetable bake, which I, there's obviously no available recipe for that, but I, you know, after eating it, I said, I think it's this, and, and it's in the book, which I can show you some pictures just now, mm. you know, three layers of, of different vegetables, and um, so that nobody will tell you is a typical Argentinian dish, but it's what I ate in Argentina, and, and I hadn't had before, and it was delicious. That's divine. Yeah, and... Um, so I think there's a mix for, there's, there's vegetarian, there's, um, like I, I don't eat red meat, but um, I, I, do, I do taste it. And a lot of the dishes that my husband loved is red meat, you know, chorizo omelette every morning in Mexico, we, you know, he'd have that. And then I did work on creating that recipe. And I think anybody who eats chorizo there has to try it because yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, it's one of the best in the book. Um, and then things like chimichurri in Argentina is is such a typical salsa. So it's a combination of herbs and uh, olive oil and, and citrus or, or vinegar. But there are a million versions. There's the red one, the green one, they'll argue which is the real one. Um, and uh, the best one, actually, of all the versions we had were, was made by um, an Argentinian couple in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. And so I was, you know, trying to match that. Yeah. So it's also, I think it's good. <laughs> so that's great. So we've got a couple of dishes that you're going to um, present for us tonight or yeah. actually get us working on to, to, to get going. So what's on the offering for tonight? So it, it was hard to know how to select from a whole book, but I thought what would be really useful i mean i look at um, some friends of mine who are not you know they don't cook that much and if they have people over they get a bit anxious like what do you cook people eat different things if you make a starter is it going to then you make a main is it going to be overcooked or is it going to be no what if you have a lot of people how do you know quantities and i just feel like this is something that i don't know anybody who can't eat and wouldn't enjoy um because you can do variations you can do vegetarian, you can do pescatarian, you can do it with um, beef, and also you can do it for gluten-free, uh, everything. It, it, there's something for everything and for everyone. And, and because people are basically constructing their own, they also, if they're not a fan of tomatoes, they simply leave that out. So this is why I thought this is, um, although it's quite simple, it's, it's very simple, it's mainly just chopping <laughs> and mixing. Um, hi, Sam. <laughs> so nice seeing friends and family pop in. So, I mean, a lot of you are probably just watching the kitchen, but uh, it's quite nice every now and again opening up and seeing the gallery and, and the, like the tribe that I've tried to create, sort of building a community here. Um, so 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 this is this is a selection of things that is as a starter you know we couldn't do everything but as a starting block for having people over everything is easy to do by the time your guests arrived you can be finished it's all on the table you don't have to worry about keeping it the right temperature for it being overcooked everyone can sit down once they've got their drinks they can make their own and I, honestly i think it's it's just delicious so we're doing a vegetarian version tonight but I'll talk to you about some options that are super easy. And then you can either add chicken, you can add fish, you could add uh, carne asada, you know, um, beef. And so that's the idea. And now some people will have the ingredients. So we're going to do those two dishes first uh, so that you can work in the background. I don't know uh, if anybody has ingredients other than Mark. So those of you are out of <laughs> Great. You know what? <laughs> hey, Good on. for you, Mark. Thanks. <laughs> oh, he's got his drink already. <laughs> so let's get to the kitchen. <laughs> All right. So we have prepped a lot of the stuff so that you don't have to. Um, he's got tequila. Oh, so tequila. I'm a good one. <laughs> So that you don't have to watch us chop, which I think you'd lose interest in. So we'll go as, as quickly as we can and we'll just um, interrupt things if anybody wants to ask questions. Um, okay, so, so we just need to figure out you can where see. we are. Yeah. Right. So the first thing we'll do is the guacamole. I know everybody knows guacamole, but 
I feel like there are many different versions. This is the one I like the best. It's not to say this is the only one I had in, in uh, Mexico. Sometimes they were very thin and watery. Um, they didn't have other things added, but this is my favorite. So I'm just going to figure out where I have to go for you to see it. Okay, so you can oh. see that little thing. Lift it up. Oh. You see there? Oh. There we go. Okay, so this advanced entails... camera work. <laughs> <laughs> This is how Nigella started. Four avos, and we've got one tomato finely chopped. So we've taken out the seeds and the middle just because it gets quite watery. Um, so it's, it's better just to use the walls. And then we've got some chopped coriander. And some people not a fan of coriander, you can leave it out. But it actually, it really does add a lot. And then uh, chopped spring onion and some lime juice. So, oh, and some jalapeno. So the thing about chilies, a lot of people say they don't like chili, they don't like hot food. But honestly, in Mexico, I didn't eat. There's, there's always a hot option, like a hot salsa on the table you can add. But you, if, you know, not everything is hot. So the chili adds like a nice warmth to the dish. A layer. Yeah. So, kind so of... you know, if you don't like chili, I wouldn't say take it out completely, but rather find a mild chili like jalapeno um which are the we've got one here yeah 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 so you know these guys they, they look they look dangerous but you know they're not and if you take out the seeds in the membranes which a lot where a lot of the heat is they they're lovely you know you, something like this is is pretty killer and you know then you get things in between so uh elaine is going to open up these avos and start in a mixing bowl just to empty them out of their shells. What I'd say is don't start squashing it now. Just leave it very chunky, mix in the other ingredients. And by the time the other ingredients are mixed in, you're probably at the right consistency if you like me and like a chunky guacamole. Okay, and then Maureen, if I can borrow you. <laughs> so for the pico di gallo, it seems like a, 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 an overly simple, unexciting dish, but I feel like it's the la it's another layer that you need. Oh, I see that you can't, they can't see you at all, can they? Um, no, I will come closer. I will come closer, yes. Okay. So the, the, the pico, um, which is the beak of the rooster, is, um, oh, sorry is chopped tomatoes, very finely chopped, again taking out the seeds ahead of time so the whole thing doesn't become very watery, and red onion, and a little bit of cilantro as well, and lime juice. So I think the quantities were sent to you, if, if you need to know specific, I can tell you. But that's just going to get mixed together, so it's not even oil or anything, just tomato, onion, cilantro, and some lime juice. Here we go. And I mean, that's, that's just going to go in here. As you can mix it all together. Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. Um, okay, so while, while that happens, we're going to start to make the drinks. Um, so once you've done that, I yeah. can just show them again. Okay, okay so, so the non alcoholic option that we're going to do. Is um, I should do this because I feel like my when when I was in uh, Colombia, which was a country that um, people put the fear of God into me about being <laughs> being kidnapped and hijacked and but they were the most friendly, hospitable people I've ever come across and and it was just magical. So. This was a, a lemonade that I had on a little piazza, like a Spanish piazza in Cartagena, beautiful old centre of, of the town. And now we're halving the portions here. Um, the full portion would be one apple. So this is half of a Granny Smith apple, um, some mint leaves and fresh lime juice. And then we're just going to put water and ice. And the way it was served to me was in a beautiful little jug. And then they brought a separate jug of sugar syrup. So you can add as much as you want. Um, we're using agave syrup. Um, maybe it's more healthy. It's definitely more expensive. Um, and, and 
and it's really nice and refreshing. So you, you can just, for the sugar, go to your taste. I'm just using um, about a, a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. And we're just going to put it into the, into the Nutribullet. Noise coming up. You can't even up. see me. Here I am, being put to task, a vague level of entertainment. <laughs> I am so bad at following recipes, I must tell you. But I'm really good at being told what to do in a kitchen. I, I, I listen well, right, Chef? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going above the max line, so if this goes pear shaped. Okay, now it's one, two, is this dish? There we go. Now it's on. Okay, we're done. We're done. Okay. I think we're done. Okay, can you demonstrate that? For oh, sure, okay. <laughs> you, said, you said pick up the guy, though, and I go for it. All right. I normally live in Montenegro, so it's lovely to be here. Yes. Where do yeah, I go? Close. There we go. Right. You see this little screen here? That's, that's, that's where I go. Okay. Yeah. Up, up, up. Am I there? There yeah, you go. There, there you go. go. There this go. is the pico, and then she adds some lime juice to it. Watch the this screen. This is a big TV there moment. We there we go. Yes. Simple ingredients with a deep taste. There you go. Come on, so you have to say something now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here is... Um... Oh my gosh, look at that. Where's the... Okay, so there is the, no, the lime, back. apple, wow, and back. lemonade. Lower and back. Lower and back. Yeah, just watch yourself. No, no, no you don't have to look there. Look at that screen. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> One okay. day. Okay, so that, I think, does need just a touch more sweetness. And uh, you can just add. So, so what have you added for the sweetness? Is, I, I uh, put, uh, yeah, the agave syrup. But you can just make a simple syrup, you know, with, with water and I'll sugar. How in comparison to a simple sugar, like a simple syrup? I feel like it's a, it's, it's, it's not so cloying. Okay. It's a, it's a gentler. Okay. Mm. Oh, do you want to have it? I'm so happy right now. I get to taste everything. Okay. So, Lachaim, what did I say in, um, uh, in, uh, in South America, in Mexico? Win provincial. Oh, yeah. that's for that's for that's for like bon appetito. Okay, for cheers, just a uh, normal cheers. Lachaim, cheers, up here killed. Whatever it is that takes your fancy. Mm. It's amazing. It's got like a really nice sort of sour tang to it. I highly recommend this one in the book. Thank you, Jody and Martin. Salute. Right? Okay, so that was the oh, non-alcoholic nice. option. Now, the very alcoholic option. Oh. So, the thing is, when we first tasted a margarita in Mexico, um, it's very different to anything that I had tasted before. And it's pretty much all alcohol. So... Come close to them. Come and do Sorry. it here. Come and do it here so, so they see you. So we salt the rim and then you, you get the blended ones and the ones on the rocks. And uh, I'm making one on the rocks, which is the way I drank most of them there. So <clears throat> I'm going to try and measure it out, which I don't usually. Can I ask you to come to me? So it's a full glass of ice. Um, tequila. You don't need to use a fancy tequila. In Mexico, they use a basic white. So you get two tequilas. You get the white tequila and you get the reposada, which is the aged one, which is generally more expensive. They don't use fancy tequila. No need. Um, so it would be one part tequila. Oh yes, I just wanted to show the okay. consistency. And then this is triple sec, 
Um, they have an orange liqueur called Controy. Um, not Controy, but uh, so any orange liqueur, but again, no need to be buying the most expensive um, option. So, you know, some, some recipes, they say equal parts triple sec and tequila. I put a little bit more triple sec because the limes in Mexico are completely different to here. They, they're very sweet compared to the limes that we get. So it's quite different. And then, and, and then about one part, about one part lime, fresh lime juice. Mm, if you like I love sour lime. things, add a little bit more. And then to taste, if um, to sweeten it, I again use some agave. So I'm just going to see for me. Yeah, it needs a little bit, which I put here. So this is um, one of the ones that you can buy here. As I said, they they are. What would they, they have are, sweetened it with? Well, they don't because. Their limes are so sweet. Oh, uh, okay. And already you've got so if you put more triple sec, you don't need to you don't need to sweet to sweeten it. But the difference is the lime, the taste okay. of the lime. Okay, so as you can see, the only thing that's non-alcoholic in here is is one part lime and the ice really. So guaranteed to get a party started. So one day I should have a real kitchen conversations in the kitchen and then you'd all be able to come to our Mexican evening and taste. But in the meantime, it's me and Mary Louise that have the yeah. absolute Who can I pleasure. Offer? Who can I offer? So this is the lemonado. Is the lemonado. This is what we just had there, the Granny Smith um, lemonado, yes, yes. which is just delicious. Yes, You're going to have to take my word for it. Or visit me in my kitchen one day. So now the guacamole, this has come out of its come out of its shell. And we're just gonna put the other ingredients in. And I just want to show oh, you. Yes. It's terribly hard. hard with this. I like this on the yoga phones. Mm. Sorry, I'm getting distracted with the cocktails. I never drink cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so there we go. Okay, I'm going to try and stir at an angle. If you look at the screen there, then you can see what they see. There we go. So you can see it's pretty chunky at the moment, and I'm going to leave chunks. Once you've got all of this properly mixed, you're not far off where I like it to be in the end. So not totally totally salt. and then and then just a generous amount of salt i think with this food it's important especially tomatoes i think you need a lot of salt with tomatoes okay and then i'd suggest using a mixing bowl first because uh, it gets pretty messy and then you can put it into your serving dish and this is the this is the traditional mold cajete that they that they use in Mexico, made out of volcanic rock, and it's bring it close to them. Got a pig face. Some, and then, then this. So if you make your guacamole in there, you just pound it in there with your like a like a like a big pestle and. How did you get this? I actually <laughs> bought it afterwards. <laughs> Because that's heavy. Mm. Okay, wait. Oh, we didn't put the salt, which I was supposed to find before. A little bit of salt. I like that you make it um, chunky, you know, as opposed to it's often like so over smooth guacamole, I find. So I like the texture of this. Yeah. So this is going to see. It's got a bit of lime in. I think we need a lot more salt. Gosh, I don't know what we're gonna do with all this food. <laughs> so, and where are that we've got? We've got um, so the corn chips. Once you've got, oh, there we go. Yeah. Let's 
Some more. Whoopsie. Here. So it's these whole chips. So this is what we're using tonight with the guacamole. Okay. Um, did I say we put jalapeno in there? Mm. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Okay, so that, that's what it looks like in the end. And the uh, absolutely delicious bite is just to sort of put a bit of that and then a little bit of that. Bring that close to oh. that. So and then so we've got that combination. And that's and that's the most delicious snack that you can make in about what? That was like 20 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes. So I'm gonna have to taste this. Okay, you must. Right, so now Mark, you can start, at least you, you can start on that. <laughs> um, so right, we've done good. our drinks. We're going to do another few things. So this is going to go into our tacos. Um, as I said, we're doing a vegetarian version um, today. So we're going to have um, beans, and I'll take you through the beans, and then some crunchy cabbage salad, and then some, you, you put some guacamole, some pico de gallo, We've got a roasted salsa, uh, which we'll show you. And then also a radish, like a radish salsa. Hi, Boo. <laughs> hey, Boo, <Martin>. too. <laughs> so, uh, just excuse us. So, it's, this is the informality of, of conversations in the kitchen. They're friends of ours that are tuning in. I've got a friend of mine from Ireland. How's it, Mike? I've got Murtos just come in from Greece. I just love that. Oh, no, London, London. Sorry, I always get excited. <laughs> I, Irene is here from Greece. Um, um, and Cornelia and, from Dubai. Yeah, so thanks for Renault joining from us. Olivia. <laughs> thanks, guys. So, proceed. All right, so we're just going to show you all of these things. And at the end, you'll have this table full of different colors and textures and you make your you heat up your tortillas and wrap them up with whatever combination okay so i'm just going to move uh, what should we do okay maybe we do the roasted salsa first should we move this back yeah. so now we, yeah. oh my god it was heavy did you get this in south africa oh, in south america <laughs> no, no, no. couldn't have traveled it. with that so this is a roast the two roasted salsas in the book um and both of them tomato based with chili and onion and you know what elaine we forgot to roast the onions oh really <laughs> I, I peeled them <laughs> i followed instruction i promise okay so there should be this plus onion so <laughs> so you just <laughs> cut the tomatoes in half and and uh, a red or a yellow pepper, some jalapenos, and um, the garlics. So you can you, you just roast them. Just leave them in their their skins while they're roasting. And then imagine that there are some red onions roasted <laughs> here. <laughs> and then what you do is um, I've taken off. I've taken off just the, the very hard blistering skins. It doesn't matter. You don't have to take them all off. It's got quite a nice roasted charred flavor. And also you can scrape some of the flavor off the roasting dish. And then we're going to just stick blend it with, um, we're going to stick blend it or we'll put it in a blender. This is um, some wine vinegar. I've used sherry vinegar, which I think gives a beautiful, like uh, sweet flavor as opposed to just a plain wine vinegar. It's a little bit harder to find, but I think it's worth it and olive oil, dried oregano, and dried chili flakes. <laughs> okay, and then, and then that goes into the blender with um, a lot of fresh uh, flat leaf parsley. So, there we go. So, so this gets added as well. <laughs> okay. So that's just going to get blended and I'll show you in a minute. That's also delicious to eat with the nachos or as part of the tacos. And it's also lovely, if you, even if you're making meat, 
if you're making potatoes it's and and you can make it as spicy as you like just add more chili don't take the seeds out of the chilies if you want it hotter okay then these guys um i feel like this is one of the greatest things and um i know lauren will agree with me is the the pickled onions so we've just sliced red onions and this has just been in there for what a couple of hours and put it into lemon juice and you can see they go the beautiful iridescent pink, pink. can you maybe just take some out and put them in here yes and then those you can leave in the fridge and then just add them to salads add them to sandwiches they've got like this beautiful sweet crunchy tang that they add to things and and then and then once you're left with the lemon juice that they've marinated in just add olive oil turn it into a dressing um really nice and so for the tacos to add that on top it like gives this whole nother dimension of taste and texture mm. this looks beautiful is it okay about this quickly oh you show it first yeah. you show it first okay so so that's what they look like i feel like they should win just based on appearance, but they taste delicious too. Okay, we just have to blitz, so it's going to be a bit of a... Nice! I'll find you want it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speak to the mind, you know? Okay, we'll just, just show you um, how far we blend it. That's ready in a minute. You can just put it into a, a maybe I can put it in a Oh yeah, this is easier for them to see. Okay. So this one is the this is this this is the salsa criolla, which is the a roasted salsa. So that's what it it looks like. Mm, maybe not the most beautiful sight, but uh, it's very delicious because it's got all those roasted flavors and the sweetness, um, and also the, the the vinegar and the olive oil and the chili. Okay, it's delicious. Trust me. And so this you have um, traditionally with corn chips. Um, well, this, how, how do they serve it? Like what, what is, you know, is it added, you know, with the tortillas? So a lot of the places we went to in Mexico, we were on a budget. So we weren't going to fancy places. We were eating where the people ate. And so you sit down, they bring you the tortillas in a little basket. And they bring you usually, you know, one to three different types of um, salsas some very hot some uh, you know a fresh salsa that's not cooked one that's cooked so and that's what i love because you can just layer all these flavors so it would be virtually with any meal you know if you're having like um even for breakfast you know every morning it would be they'll have rice as part of the breakfast so you might have eggs and rice and beans and 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 then your salsa's there it's almost every meal you can just add to to your meal yeah you add it to anything it kind of goes with everything right yeah okay and then this one definitely the simplest this is radishes which i never thought very much about um but they they're beautiful as part of this this you uh, chat and our horror right, i'm gonna i'm gonna squeeze so all this is is sliced radishes squeeze uh orange juice onto it and then add some chopped mint Sorry. Oh. <laughs> and try not to get it in your eye. <laughs> okay. And and then once you've left it to marinate. Okay, I'm okay. Thanks. Once you've left it to marinate for a bit, the colours are so beautiful and it also mellows the taste a little bit. So again, it's just another layer into the tacos or into the meal. It's like every bite is a surprise because you've got so many different things going on. Okay, so that's going to 
That's going to just marinate a little bit quietly on its on its own. I saw there was one question. Um, uh, Heidi, you had asked a question: How long it takes to marinate? How long were, uh, was the lemon in? Traditionally, how long do you leave the onions in the lemon juice? I mean, I, I don't know if there's an ideal amount, but even if you leave them in for even if you leave them in for half an hour. They already, you know, the longer they stay, the more mild and the more soft they go. But just to take that sharpness out of them and to give them a lovely um, sweetness, yeah, I'd say sometimes I've been pushed for time and I just leave them in for 20 minutes and it's and fine. It yeah. um, what I did today, I think I started it at maybe three o'clock. Um, so it's been in marinating for four hours something yeah like but that. but you don't need you definitely don't need more than an hour yeah but but it's it's fine you can leave them there I, I leave them in the fridge sometimes you know a couple of days and just keep adding them to dishes okay so now we have um, we have cabbage salad I know that sounds so dull I never actually ate cabbage salad before I went there because I always thought of it as coleslaw which is very mayonnaise -y. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of mayonnaise, but radish salad. What or what page on the book? Uh. So you know you can ask questions just like Mark did um, in the chat. Um, I'm following the voice in the background. I'm following the chat line. Um, it is on. I think it's in Guatemala. I'm going to tell you. We're going to we're going to tell you now now. This this book, I must tell you, it's just so beautifully photographed. I just want to show you while I found the page. Okay, so that would be a taco meal. So when we stayed in in um, in Baja California in Mexico, we were doing a surf course, and the one day we went down to the beach, and the fishermen were coming in, and the lady we were staying with bought some yellowtail, I think. And she just made the most delicious fish tacos. I mean, oh. And all she did was slice the fish into thin fingers and push them into breadcrumbs. So no batter, no, um, no egg or anything, just breadcrumbs and then fry them. And then all the usual suspects. So if you have a look at this, you know, you've got, you've got your pico and you've got your radishes and your uh, guacamole and your, and your onions and put some fresh herbs if you want, uh, squeeze a little bit of extra lime if you're doing it with fish, uh, oh, so delicious. And then if you want to do it with chicken, you know, say you're having people for dinner and you've already done all this, you don't feel like roasting a chicken, you can just get a rotisserie chicken, you know, and, and just with two forks, pull the chicken off, off the, um, the bone and have a plate of chicken, then people can put chicken and, um, but not to, okay, you're going to find that, the radishes. I think it's in Guatemala. Okay. <laughs> and you're going to answer the question. Heidi just asked where to get the book. Where oh. can she get the book? Um, I, I have books that I can organize. It's not, it's not on shelf anymore because they only keep it on shelf for two years. But um, if you're in touch with Elaine, I've got lots of books. Um, and also just to say, the, the one night we were catching a late night bus. Um, I, I don't eat meat, but I was very tempted to. <laughs> they were selling these hot dogs and I just thought why does everybody just put tomato sauce and mustard on a hot dog because they put all of this stuff on the hot dog so you know all of this the pico the guacamole the the, the cabbage the, the crunchiness and um we've even had we've had burger nights where we where I make all of this and you can even put on a burger I just feel like it goes as a combination of things with everything okay the the uh what is this page 76 was the radishes mm. but really it's just radishes mint and um oh i see i put your cilantro in the book you can add that <laughs> <laughs> by the way added extra and salt oh good we should add salt <laughs> always <laughs> add you salt don't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um just uh, follow this here um, I'm sure I've just done that and it's awesome. Oh, okay. yay. Okay, we're getting good feedback. That's amazing. Right. So, cabbage salad is what I was telling you. Um, 
What is so nice about cabbage salad is that if you, you know, most salads you can't dress ahead of time, they go all soggy. With a cabbage salad, I dress a little bit early and then the, uh, the it becomes, you know, like a little bit softer and the flavors merge and it's delicious. So this is just a white cabbage that's been thinly sliced. The carrots are with a vegetable peeler, just to give it some visual interest and one avocado cut into little cubes and some uh, one tomato cut doesn't have to be super small and um flat leaf flat leaf parsley yes and then the dressing is just lime juice and olive oil and salt and pepper and honestly you make it you leave it to stand a little bit and even if you're just eating it as a, as a salad or you adding it on, it's so nice on tacos because you get that crunch factor and that mm. freshness. Mm. Um, and sometimes even there's a recipe in the book for um, this beautiful Brazilian coconut, lime and chili seafood dish. And, and I, on the side, I just make some rice and, a, and, and marinate the, uh, the cabbage with this dressing and then just add some sesame seeds so it's just it's so simple i feel like oh it, that sounds nice you want delicious. to show them that photograph of, of is that the cabbage salad uh, yes okay that's the cabbage salad there we go did they see that did you show show i there don't know go. did somebody did there we go yes okay lovely <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this one, if you can just mix that all together. I yes. certainly can. There we go. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we are going to, um, there we go. We're going to do, I just wanted to show you, we're going to start heating up the, the tortillas now um, because everything is kind of coming to a crescendo. And then we can just wrap it all up. So I'm sure you know what's available out there, but... So in Mexico, there'll be the wheat, the wheat tortillas and the corn ones. The corn ones are more authentic and they're made with a, it's called masa harina. It's the corn flour, which has been treated in a way that it's difficult to find here, but they are being made now. Uh, so El Burro makes these. There's also Santana that makes them. They, they, they're not like they are in Mexico, but if, you know, for gluten free, they, they're quite nice and also where did you get it in Cape Town to uh, those you got at Woolworths so, so these I got at Spa they have two different brands of these corn and they have organic blue corn and they have this is I think the white corn I think they've got a yellow corn pick and pay has a lot so for example this is a gluten-free tortilla that pick and pay makes that's made with a, a chickpea flour they're actually quite nice they've probably got preservatives and stuff but and um, and then most places are doing tortillas more like wraps so they're not this size in Mexico but it doesn't matter it's, you know we're not in Mexico and they'll be delicious <laughs> <laughs> so, in, so to heat those up um, we're just going to put them we're just going to make a little put them in a little bit of foil put them in a low heat oven and just let them heat while we finish the food. Oh, wonderful. So here is the cabbage salad. Oh, wow. So Mike also said you can cut those. Oh, that looks lovely. Okay, beautiful. There was a nice suggestion in the um, chat box as well. Suze. Mm -hmm. So Michael said you can cut those into tortillas and fry them. Oh yes. Which would yeah, be really nice. Yes. Yeah. Delicious. Right. So we, we are going to make one more thing and then I'll just, well, I might as well tell you now. So these are the beans. Um, I never wa I never ate too many beans before going there but it, after being in Latin America it seemed inconceivable that keep your eye on here that's what it's in. anybody doesn't <laughs> eat beans <laughs> so this is um, in fact in Brazil the one place we went and it, they only had one menu and that was rice beans and then you could either have um, chicken or a vegetable or fish but those beans were so delicious so I thought I must try and get the recipe and um, she said all you do is you, you, you you just stir in the love, you stir in the love. 
but actually they stir in a lot of lard um, and that's the reality. So none of my recipes contain lard, uh, but that is the way the, uh, how they cook a lot. So this recipe you cook, uh, we just made it because we were worried about time. It's not so easy to see. A bit of celery, onion, garlic, jalapeno, and you cook that. And once that's soft, you add beans. Either uh, tin beans are fine. Otherwise, if you cook them, it's you, you should rinse, you should uh, soak them overnight, then rinse them, and then cook them without salt. Just add salt at the last minute. Uh, well, at the last stages. Otherwise, it tends to. Okay. Otherwise, it tends to not break down. So. All this was with those ingredients, added the beans, and then butter, olive oil, and a bit of um, Worcester sauce, Worcester, however you say, Worcester sauce, um, and salt and pepper. But that's for, for a vegetarian option for the tacos, that's really nice. It's like very comforting. Which, where, where is it in your book? Yeah, this one. So it's this one in the book. Okay, now, now this is the last one. Um, I'll just tell you a little story. In, in that part of the world, there are a million varieties of corn. Uh, uh, purple, red, yellow, white, gnarly, thin, small, hard. And in Oaxaca, which is one of the foodie capitals of Mexico, there were these little carts that would come around and they had boiling hot corn in them and they'd take them out and then they'd, they'd put their version of mayonnaise, which is nothing like I've tasted. They'd put that on, then they'd put some chili and they'd put some grated cheese, again, hard to find an exact substitute, and then they'd squeeze lime juice. And it was just the most delicious thing. So this recipe, is an attempt at matching that it's not exactly the same but i know a lot of people have said they really love it it's very tasty and it's quite nice to make with brais you can do the whole corn on on the braai and then you get that nice charred flavor or if you just want an easier version you can boil the corn that's what we've done tonight and if you don't want you know people don't want to be holding it you can actually cut it off the cob and just mix everything um together so that involves Okay, so, and, um, okay, this is going to be a, okay, can you, okay, so, so those have been pre-boiled, and we've put them into a pan with some butter, and, and we're putting the chili flakes, quite a, a generous amount, unless you, you don't like so much chili, then don't. And then we're putting um, a bit of feta. Mm. Just break that in. I'm so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we're going to put that on, on the stove for a little bit. We're going to let it all the flavors sink in between the kernels. And then after that, we're going to add the freshly chopped parsley. And we're going to, when you serve it, you're going to serve it with a bit of lime. And then you're going to squeeze the lime over it. And that combination between the chili and the salt and the lime and the cheesiness, it's so good. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Oops. I'm just going to keep on drinking margaritas. <laughs> okay, maybe the morning I can just Okay, just just until just the side melted and okay. gets coated and then, and, add, and then just add that. Okay, okay that's good. Oh, then that you can just serve with that. Okay. Uh, I think that 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 brings us to the end of everything that we were going to make. Maybe what we no, we can't. We'd love to give you a top view of the table because the top view of the table is so beautiful with all the colors. But I know that Elaine will take a photograph and send it to you. <laughs> but, that, but that one that you sent, actually, this is from the book because there's a lot that we've made. You know, the, the roasted salsa and the cabbage salad and the pico and the onions and the guacamole and the chips and um, the beans aren't there. And... 
Yes, but that's most of it. And, um, you know, there were a few things that... Can you go into the chats and see what people are oh, yeah. I'm asking you? So here we go. Um, can you put the call number? So just read it out and, and, and chat to people. Okay. Yes. So Julia or Mark are saying, can you put that corn on the bar? Oh, Bri. on the braai. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, so you would put the corn on the braai first. And then once it's cooked and quite gnarly, then I would put it into a pan and just mix it with the other ingredients so it kind of soaks in. And then it's delicious. Actually, on the braai is, is more delicious because it's it gets really quite um, nice and chewy. I must I must also just add I got the most beautiful photograph from Yvonne. Um, I know Yvonne and Angel, you busy making your guacamole. And wow. Well done, guys. That's so cool. They did the margarita, the the, the apple lemonade, oh, wow. and that's awesome. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm afraid there are no, there's no, no Mayan fish or fish and banana. Oh, sorry. Yes. Is there a recipe for Mayan fish or fish and banana leaves? No. And, and things like in banana leaves, I, I would have stayed away from just because they're a bit tricky to get hold of. But, um, yeah, that would be delicious. Mm. Oh, okay. The corn is up and the stylus has put it on the perfect plate. It might all go rolling off though. So that's what it looks like. I don't know if you can see. Yes, and then, you can and see then it's nicely done. Okay, and then all you do is you just squeeze your lime over, and then we have to get a close up of you biting it and to see if, I have if it lives up to, to, to its looks. Oh my god, <laughs> I have no problem. You can take a photograph. So, the instruction I was given those of you that aren't in South Africa, there's another chef called. Uh, that was it Nigella you said who oh, was it that, oh, that, that, oh yes you can tell I, them I, the said, story. I said to Elaine you've got to if you taste stuff you've got to eat like Nigella she just looks like she's loving it it doesn't matter if it gets on your chin and all that <laughs> she gave me permission to be messy while I eat so I'm going to taste it for you and be a little bit messy okay so get out of the camera and take a photograph so I can post it for all of them and then you can chat to them while I entertain them. And then I'll just show you. Um, this was another salsa that I was, if we'd had lots of time, we could have done all of them. But wait, where's the other book? I put it. Okay, so I'm going to taste it. I'm going to do a quick tasting for everybody. I'm going to find a cheesy one because this is really a treat for me. And I'm going to open it up. And try not to look like too much of a pig. And here we go. Like you mean it. Mm. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna sit down. <laughs> Does it not need salt? No, no it's perfect. Salt. Oh, good. Okay. I really and those ch that chili really works. Oh my Did god! Did you squeeze lime? No, I didn't. Oh, that's the clincher. And there's an added. I need a bit more lime. I'm just gonna show you. So this is another thing that you can add to to the table. This is a, another fresh chopped salsa, which has got carrots, which has got carrots and spring onions and also a bit of chili and red onions. And then I added uh, some black mustard seeds, which also have the, this nice little pop. because I think it's nice to have lots of different textures. Um, and that's also with oregano and vinegar and lemon juice. So nice and tangy. There's a lot of tanginess going on. And then if people... For non-vegetarians, I spoke to you about this chorizo omelette, but this chorizo can also be made as part of this uh, buffet, let's say. Uh, you cook the chorizo with uh, tomatoes and spring onions and some chilies and just wait until it all disintegrates. You actually you take the, the peel off the chorizo and you chop it finely and then just let it cook away. And, and that's delicious with the nachos and with the tortillas and things. So I think I've said a lot of things. <laughs> How the tortilla is doing in the oven? Oh, and yeah. let's have a look at the next question. Uh, what, did, what do I press here? Oh, Susie says, hands down the best omelette on the planet. Thank you, Suze. Okay. 
I think that was it. So I'm now having so much fun. I'm now going to open it up. And those of you who would want to ask questions, sorry, that's what happens when you eat and you speak and you try and be entertaining, but I've got corn in my teeth. Um, please unmute yourself. Please add conversation with us. Um, anyone who wants to ask Susie questions about any of the recipes, about her book, about her travels. Um, I'm going to run this. Okay, I'm going to just construct one so that... Okay, so Myrta, I see you unmuted yourself. Did you want to ask a question? I'm going to just look out for hands. Who, who I, just, do... I remember uh, Susie phoned me from South America 13 years ago now when she was there. And so it just took me back to that time. Where are you, Mom? There's, there's, oh, there. there. <laughs> I know. Actually, this book I I wrote a long time before it was published because every publisher I took it to said that South Africans don't know about Latin American food. There are not enough people who would buy it, um, which was true. It was not very well known at all. It's much better known now, although it's just Mexican that's known. People don't know about necessarily Central or South America. And it's thanks to Mario Louis who introduced it to the publisher who published it Thank you. Mm -hmm. and made it so beautiful <laughs> and it really is one of the most beautifully put together books of recipe books i've ever ever seen I, I, i'm listening i'm just going to make one so that we can see how it looks constructed okay so who else in the house wants to ask questions uh mark uh they, they are they're a winner right the millies how do you how do you pronounce that? Um, elotes. Elotes. My next life, I'm going to speak Spanish. Okay. So who else? <laughs> Maybe this time I'll get some help. <laughs> and if you want more spice, um, so if you want more spice, you just like cut up some chilies and put it in some oil and just have it on the table. So whoever wants more spice in things, rather than alienating everybody by it being too spicy, they can just add on the, the chili oil. So, I mean, that's sort of a little bit like the finished product. Look in the screen there, that's what you see. I've just over filled it a bit. I need one of those big ones now. <laughs> Turn it around there, there. Okay, so, so that would it. That's what it sort of looks like. It. Hum. Oh. Hum. Yay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I've got so much food in my kitchen. And it's just me here. <laughs> okay. Who, who else in the house? Mike. Yeah. Do you ever, uh, in your travels, uh, get to eat testones? Plantains? Do you have plantains down there? Yeah, so they, they ate them throughout Mexico and Central and, and South America, and I love them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so a plantain, it looks like a banana, but it's much firmer and it's not sweet. And it's they cook it, so it's served a lot for um, breakfast. And uh, how do you serve it? How, how, how do they prepare it? They, um, something, they, they'll like slice it into coins i mean they do many 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 things uh, it's one of the staples um but the way that i had it the most is that they uh, slice it into little coins and they deep fry it and so they've just got that balance of sweet and savory but they're much firmer it's not like the soft texture of a banana and with breakfast so in for example where was that in guatemala or nicaragua they'll have um, beans and rice which is a staple, and then you 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 have your plantains and your egg, and oh, nice. and then once you get to Brazil, they serve you cake, cashew nuts, and fruit for breakfast. Oh, so wow. at the end of it, you can literally eat anything for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, we used to make those and then slice them up, and you cook them, and then take them out when they get a little bit soft, and then you smash them flat, and then yes. you put the skin again. Yes, a little bit of salt on there. Delicious. I think in Costa Rica, they also do that quite a lot. Yeah. And plantains or uh, pasteles. Did you ever get a pastel? Which was a pastel? 
Pastelli is, a, is that it's the same thing. The green bananas, they make it into a paste and they cook it with other hot peppers and chickpeas and things. And then they wrap it in a banana leaf and then boil it. Oh, no, I did Have it with hot sauce. Oh, delicious. And which yeah. is in Mexico? Sorry? In Mexico. No, uh, Puerto Saint Rico, the Caribbean. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah do, you have, do you have plantains down there? No. Yeah, we don't have it here either. That's I'm like, oh. Yeah, it's it's crazy. You get things exported all around the world, but there's some things that haven't made it here at all. <laughs> yeah. That's a, I. It's good you were saying with the substitutes uh, for ingredients because that's what I'm running into. It's like you just it just doesn't exist. You just have to make the best you can. Yeah. You know. And, like, you, can, and you can still do you know delicious stuff, but oh yeah, it's not going to be a hundred percent the same and and that you know that even changes like the fact that your limes here are different to your limes there even if you still use a lime the quality of the taste is still different yeah yeah absolutely you know the lemons too you, you get that lemons like you just smell it smells so lemony but you go to the shop here and get the lemon it's like it looks like a lemon <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly you gotta adjust for it you know um, who's with Mark? Mark's been enjoying a, a margarita. Who's having margaritas? Julia. I can see. Oh, uh, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so pleased I'm not the only one. I feel like I'm certainly the only one here drinking. Um, cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> and Pete, thank you for joining. Pete's in the house. Also from LA. Who else is going to just um, fire away with some questions? Ask anything about the book, any stories, more stories. Mm. I can. How about um, soups? Do you have soups in the book? Any soups? Um, yes. So for the for Mexico, there was actually I discovered the soup in Guatemala, but it was made by a Mexican lady who was a trained chef and it was so delicious where is the book um it's not it's not vegetarian um i don't know are you vegetarian not every day <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good answer <laughs> so so that that it's um a chicken lime soup and it's got a it's got the warmth of the chili and the tomatoes and you shred the chicken into it and then you top it with the avocado cubes and break the nachos on so it's got the creaminess of the avo i know it seems strange to people here to put avo a cold avo on a hot soup but it's oh. just so delicious because you've got that creaminess and then you come across the nacho piece and that's all crunchy and then there's so much lime and a little bit of chili and you know the saltiness of the soup and so that's definitely one of, of my favorites. Um, Rose Linda said it's also one of her favorites. She just said, right? Said in the chat. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's it's a nice one. And then there's another soup that... Um, um, I'm just going to answer. I saw Martin and Jody <coughs> asked whether the, um, you can get the book. Um, I will... Um, you can all get hold of me uh on conversations in the kitchen just send me a whatsapp and uh i will direct you to susie get hold of her directly and um you can get the book from her right yeah exactly. so those of you who don't have my number um sorry i just have to kneel down to type um, i'm gonna put my um number in the chat um and if you're not familiar with conversations so you want to get more information every two weeks I have a speaker and, and, and just while the house is still full, I need to just um, get your taste buds tantalized for something completely different, but going to be amazing. In two weeks time, um, Dr. Vignesh from India is coming to speak about um, uh, helping the immune system uh, through Ayurveda. He's an Ayurvedic doctor. He's been on here before. Um, he's world renowned and he's a phenomenal um, teacher. So please just mark that date, two weeks time, which is going to take us to the 13th of May. So 
Um, somebody just asked the cost of the book. Uh, they it. are highly discounted now compared to on shelf. <laughs> 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 and um, they're 150 now. And um, Handro said they're still av available in Japan. Really? <laughs> yes, on Amazon. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Um, maybe we can just ask Mark. I know you've done a lot of the recipes. Which, which recipe did you like? Um, I, I think my favorite's the elotes, oddly enough. I mean, obviously, the tacos are great. Uh, what is that meat dish the um with the meat pieces in i forget the and famous the one oh, um, the lomo saltado lomo yes. saltado yeah no i love that i'm about 60 percent of the way through but i haven't made all the rest <laughs> <laughs> and i'm not a cook or a chef at all but it is very easy to cook from this book i, I promise you <laughs> no the, the the recipes are, are really amazing and easy to do it's delicious Thank you, thank you, Mark. So the, the dish that Mark's talking about is is from Peru. It's one of their very typical um, dishes. That's it, and it's got just these strips of peppers. And then what they actually do is they they fry um, chips, French fries, and then at the last minute mix it together with with the meat and the peppers. And you've got all these delicious flavors in the sauce, and they sort of soak up into the chips. So mm. it's very delicious. And this is an interesting one. Um, whenever we'd get to a country, I mean, we, we went through so many countries and we were traveling, you know, we didn't even research where we were going next. Sometime, remember in Ecuador, we got there, it was what is the capital? What is their currency? What do they eat? And we'd find out a lot of it just on the day of arriving. And wherever I went, I'd then go and ask local people, what is it that they'd recommend that that I try and in Peru the people at our guest house said you must have the causa limeña so when I show you the picture it looks like a very 70s style dish I guess it is um, and I thought well I'll try it because they've told me but it definitely doesn't sound like my thing and it's um, it's a mashed potato which is usually mixed with this um, their special yellow chili and then they put layers in the middle of various things. It can be vegetarian. It's often like a, actually a, a, a tuna mayonnaise, tomato, avocado, and then more of the uh, mashed potato and some, some olives on the top. And, and I mean, that does sound terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> be convincing. But I love it is, it. I, I, honestly, when I tried it, I just, I can't believe that that combination of things put together in such a bizarre, you know, in such a bizarre tower could be so delicious. So there were those surprises that I thought I have to put in the book because people are probably not going to try them. But once they do, they'll be as surprised as I am. I love that. Did you show the photograph? I did. Yeah, it I looks did. so yeah. pretty. I'm, I'm totally game too. So Mark, Mark is saying, oh, the, that one? Oh, yes. So Read it out. Um, Read it he's out. saying this re recipe, now my Portuguese accent is not very good, but this is basically the Pau de Queijo. Queijo. Um, queijo. <laughs> it basically means bread of cheese from brazil so the thing in brazil is they cook a huge amount with tapioca which i didn't know much about tapioca but for people who are looking for gluten-free it is gluten-free and so these little balls are absolutely delicious to have with drinks and they are light and airy and you just you use tapioca flour for those so What's it? What what's in it? Tell us. So it's just water, milk, uh, olive oil or butter, salt, two eggs, tapioca flour, and parmesan cheese. And the tapioca flour, well, after trying, you know, <laughs> making these, I never saw it before. But you you just find it's relatively easy to find. It looks almost like a like a corn flour, you know, mm. quite a fine flour. And those, yeah, those are good. Thanks for the suggestion. <laughs> 
So there are quite a few people I know that are interested in the book already, which is great. Um, please, everybody, go to the chat and you'll see my number is there. Um, you can just WhatsApp me um, uh, for two things, either uh, or both, preferably to, um, to get hold of Susie so that you can get a copy of this book. It's, it's really one of my treasures. It's, it's the most beautifully put together book. I've probably said that a couple of times, but it's, it's really stunning. Um, and Let's show them this picture of Mexico. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that's a photograph of Mexico. Beautiful. And that was one of the... And so I'll just... Yes, go for it. Them. So when I, I immigrated, I got rid of the majority of my cookbooks. I gave them to Susie, actually. <laughs> and I took three or four, and one of them is Susie's. And a lot of people from here see it in my kitchen, and they look through it, and they absolutely love it. So can't go wrong. I need to send you a box, Mo. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, great. So uh, my, my cousin Pete is on. Um, he's, uh, where is he? Is his uh, um, screen on? I don't know if his screen on tonight, but he asked um, for me. He's going to come and visit next year and uh, I'm going to get a book for you. There we go. There's Pete. Hey, Pete, I'll definitely Hi. get a book for you without a doubt. <laughs> yeah, really. I just looked on Amazon. It's not available here. So we'll get it when I uh, see you next year. You're going to have to next year and visit yeah yeah definitely I'm my, you know my backyard is inspired by the colors of mexico um oh, wow. Wow. that's like being in mexico <laughs> amazing yeah. wow they're not shy there no I love they're not that. they're not shy with the colors anything goes love it that's what i love about it <laughs> I totally, it's so on my bucket list of places to go to. It's, um, you've really got my sort of, now I want to go even more, Suze. So I love that, love, love the background, the backyard. Peter, I'll definitely get you a book. Yeah, hey, Susie, when we do uh, tacos over here, uh, we just, we have a gas stove. So we put them right on the flame. You know, we use tongs and we just, get them charred up and sometimes yeah. they catch a light <laughs> but you have to kind of watch them <laughs> yeah actually that's the nicest way to do it the only thing is i was just trying to think of a you know low yeah. low involvement so you could just put them in exactly so they, they but they are yeah when you just you put the gas on on a gas flame and then you just have tongs and just turn them back and forward and they puff up a little bit and they they get that bit of yeah. a charred a flavor yeah thanks for thanks for saying that they are more delicious like that i mean having yeah, some, yeah. can you do it on a barbecue on a braai yeah so you just i mean they, they 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 don't stay on for very long you know and then you just need to wrap them up so like in mexico they'd have them in their little beautiful little cloth in the baskets but you can if you, if you want you can just put them in foil less romantic but just because they, <laughs> they're very quick to heat up and they're very quick to cool down mm. You should be here now, Pete. There's so much food. <laughs> I'm not sure what it looks it's great. Like. It looks so I'm, awesome. I'm, I'm so excited and it's just like <laughs> Then I have all of you to share it with. So, you know what? I tell you what. So, I'm thinking that um, some of my friends that are sitting in the house that are in far places in the world, you should all come and visit in summer. And Susie and I will put together a Mexican evening live in my kitchen. Oh, man. You got it. I'll be there. Yes. So, Mr. Barnard and Mr. Thomas, you are coming to have a Mexican evening in my kitchen, and I see some friends there. And we'll I play really music too. Them. Absolutely. Oh, I love yeah. that. Nice. We'll get a little drum jam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mike. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rosalind. Uh, so nice that you came to join. Yeah, thank you, everybody. It was lovely to spend this evening with you. Yeah.